from beyond the veil. From the fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation around the world. I'm Chris Chio. I will be taking you beyond the veil this evening. I'm joined, of course, by my lovely twin co-pilot and co-host, Mrs. Gio. Good evening, everyone. Stay and welcome. it is coming up to 2022. We typically like to do a show with you guys and gals on Christmas, on New Year's. I don't know what we're going to be doing tonight. I feel like we owe our tribe some time. We also owe our, our friends that are here in Las Vegas some time, too. Yes, we My do. My friend came over, knocked on the door the other day, and he's like, dude, I haven't heard from you in weeks. Where the fuck are you? Aww. And we sat down. We, we, we had a little yeah. bit of fun, and it was so nice to reconnect. And so I feel like tonight we need to go out and have some fun. And I we want do. each and every one of you to go out and have some fun too. So we wanted to do a show um, a little bit earlier tonight. So um, we're going to try to keep it short because we got to get somewhere before eight o'clock. And um, maybe Mrs. Gia will take off if the show uh, goes on longer than that. But uh, we wanted to wish everybody a happy 2020 and part 20. three. One, you mean? No, 2020 part three. Oh, 2020 part three. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're right. But we're going to shift this and mm -hmm. we're going to turn it into something positive. And for the last year, I've been feeling that we've been in a tangent universe and things have gone off the rails. But in actual fact, they haven't. Things have been exactly the way that they're supposed to, to go. And um, we want to talk about that a little bit in the first section of this um, of the show. I, as I mentioned in the opening, um, which will probably be cut from YouTube, um, uh, the Matrix 4 breakdown that we did literally two hours after the movie came out got a copyright strike by Warner Brothers. So that's available over on our Patreon, patreon.com slash BTV tribe. People were asking about it in the chat room. Um, I'm, I'm going back and forth with Warner Brothers right now because we actually got an actual strike on our channel, which is not cool at all, um, which is another reason why the Patreon is so important. So uh, thank you, first of all, to everybody that supported BTV over at Patreon. Um, thank you to everybody that has um, purchased Aya Life as well. And um, thank you for everyone who's been waiting patiently over the last few weeks yes. um, for Aya Life. We've had Thank problems you. with UPS. One of our big batches got damaged. They packaged it. We didn't package it. And then they tell us that it's our fault for it being damaged. And we sent two large batches together for the first time, which we usually just send one large batch. And one of them was damaged. And they didn't bother to send the other one through. And right. so I apologize to everybody. But we're on top of it and um, making sure to take extra special care of everybody that's been waiting. So thank you very much for your patience. If yes. you're unfamiliar with Aya Life, it is our CBD oil that's infused with the spirit of Aya ayahuasca um, we take the ayahuasca vine and we infuse it into the cbd it's 99 percent pure cbd we've had r amazing amazing reviews um and people from clyde lewis have been ordering it sharice pain management doctor uses it religiously for her husband mm -hmm. um i mean we've got doctors using it we have regular people using it we have little old ladies using it who are coming back to life as a result of this i mean it's just it's been phenomenal but i don't want to spend this time plugging Aya Life, unless you wanted to say something real I quick. just wanted to add one more thing. If it weren't for Aya Life, I would not be sitting in this chair right now. I would be in the bed, laying down, because the inflammation in my back, it would be just way too much. Um, with Aya Life, I don't have to take uh, any NSAIDs, and I am able to um, be here with you guys for, I mean, much, much longer than... Uh, a normal person with these kinds of conditions that I have. So That is very true. We might yeah. talk about it a little more, bit more later in the show, but I did want to plug the coupon code real quick, BTV Tribe, just mm -hmm. like patreon.com slash BTV Tribe. It's BTV Tribe, all lowercase, put two, four, six, eight, ten in your cart, and um, you get buy one, get one free at checkout. So we'll put two in the cart here like this. Mm -hmm. Click add to cart, go to the cart, and then type yes. in the coupon code here, BTV tribe and um, you get 50% off and we started this at the very beginning of this quote-unquote new norm thinking mm -hmm. that this was going to go on for maybe a couple you know, months maybe. Uh, uh, yeah we, we predicted yeah. that it would end around May of 2020 and so we thought let's go ahead and make sure everybody's taken care of because of the situation you that we have the zombie virus yeah. we'll just call it that and it's gone on now we're going on year three Mm -hmm. and this is just it, it's 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 getting ridiculous it's crazy yeah but it was all necessary there was a point mm -hmm. to all of this so first and foremost i want to um 
uh, uh, point everyone's attention to a post that Nathan Frazier posted earlier. Well, before you do that, let me just say uh, thank you to Witch Moon in the chat. Uh, I love y'all. Thank you for all y'all do. Uh, Angie in East Texas. Thank you so much, Angie. Um, thank you. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Please continue. Um, so Nathan posted something earlier that I thought was just phenomenal and very inspiring too. And um, he said, you know, the C word is almost over. The exploitation of this thing uh, for profits and power grabs has become too obvious for the average person to ignore. 2022 will bring return to sanity. For those of you who spent the last two years pushing back against the onslaught of panic porn, thank you. The only reason they weren't able to exploit this thing to its fullest extent was because of the constant vigilance of each and every one of you out there and others like us here at the BTV tribe, people over at Nathan's tribe, and we've all come together to really push back on this thing. They overplayed their hand. You called them on their bluff. And as a result, a lot more people now see how the game has been played. And I realized that, you know, moving through 2020 to 2021 was a big, seeming like it was a downward slope. And we were preparing for Matrix Evac. We were preparing to leave this Matrix because it, it seemed like there was no chance of a reset that was going to be a, a positive reset. I know they've been wanting to reset this in a negative fashion, and they've put it on the cover of Time Magazine, called it the Great Reset, you know, all of that. And I've noticed throughout this last year, I don't want to sound egotistical when I say this, but I'm just stating the facts. We've been targeted personally. They've taken the name Beyond the Veil, started some BS, new agey kind of podcast, call it Beyond the Veil. We had to do trademark um, notifications to them, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. I think they backed off of it, though. So if they did respect to them for acknowledging that they're, they're stepping on our trademark. But I think that esoterically what it is, it's the AI trying to take everything we've been talking about and invert it and hijack it, which is what the AI does, which is what this virus does. Likewise, they started a website called ChristGeo.com, Christ with a T in the middle of it. So they put a T right in the middle of my name, a medieval torture device. And again, I don't think that the people behind it were targeting me personally. No. However, the AI itself, theoretically, was targeting my name. So when you type in my name, you get something completely different than what we're about. The complete opposite, the complete inversion of what we're about here at Beyond the Veil. The real Beyond the Veil, the true Beyond the Veil, the true BTV tribe. But they've tried to hijack the message. They've tried to hijack literally everything we've done and when i saw the shift happening in 2020 into 2021 i couldn't believe my eyes that we had lost what i felt was our one and only chance of moving into a positive timeline but as i've talked about before i realized throughout the course of time that it's not necessarily about matrix evac what it is is about matrix resetting and about matrix reprogramming and that's why we the programmers are here in this tangent universe we've been put into this quarantine area as i've been talking about since 2018 i said 2020 was going to be a quarantine for the virus I just didn't know that it was going to be a physical quarantine. I didn't know that all this was going to manifest physically. But now that it has manifested physically, and I see where we're heading now in 2022, our end date for the Matrix Reset is December of 2022. So we have one year left until this cycle is completed. Everything that was started in May of 2018 will come to a close in May and in December of 2022. Now, does that mean that the Matrix is fully reset? I'm not quite sure if that's the case. Hopefully, what we're going to do is come together and try to push it into that direction to where we start with a year zero as what they're wanting to do or a year one, but we're doing it in our way. We're doing it in the programmer's way. We're not doing it in their way, which is the way they're trying to hijack things. And as Nathan Fraser so eloquently said, there has been so much pushback against this that they no longer can move forward with their, with their agenda. Um, as a matter of fact, the fact checkers themselves are having to admit that the vacation doesn't work. I mean, it says right here, no vacation is 100% effective. Um, and uh, I, I'm trying not to use um, keywords here, but during a, a situation like what we have now, the airborne 
stuff circulating from person to person, a vacated person can still be infected. The, va the vacation makers, the CDC and the FDA and medical professionals are unanim unanimous in saying that the vacations are not 100% effective and that even vacated people should take precautions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So basically what they're saying is that all of our efforts are in vain. None of it is working. And everything we've been saying since 2020 is true. So all of you who have been out there, and it seems like a futile effort. You're you're speaking your truth. You're putting it out there. We're being vindicated. We've been right about everything. Not just me and Sheree, but each and every one of you out there. You have been right about everything that you've been saying. And everything from the RNA-based stuff to the Wuhan stuff to literally everything, we have been spot on and right over the target. And um, I just want to thank each and every one of you for being as resilient mm -hmm. as you have been throughout all this, because I know it's been really, really, really rough. Right. But there's a reason why we have to be here. You have to have the antivirus in the same space as the virus. Mm -hmm. And we are the ones who are strong enough to take on this virus. We are the ones who are strong enough and resilient enough to withstand this. And that's why we're here. That's why we're here in this tangent universe as we disinfect this matrix system that we find ourselves in. So I wanted to say thank you for being with us thank you for being with us and being part of the btv tribe because it is your existence here in this machine right now that is causing the shift it's your existence that is fighting everything that's happening right now and people are recognizing it people who aren't even don't even listen to the show nathan frazier is a good friend of mine but he doesn't listen to btv because he thought up until the last couple of weeks that we were really kooky and even though he's a real good friend, we hung out together, uh, we've done music together. He called me up the other day and he said, Chris, I got to talk to you, man. You know, for the several years, I thought you guys were crazy, but you're right on the mark with this whole simulation thing. You're right on the mark with everything. He said, I've been reading ancient books and I'm starting to see in ancient books concerning magic, astrology, tarot, all kinds of stuff like this, that what you guys are talking about is exactly what they were talking about back then, except for you're using different terminology now. You're using um, uh, computer programming and you're using the word code instead of energy and all this. He called me out of the blue at random and he was having a little bit of a, I don't wanna say it was a spiritual crisis, but a little, let's call it an awakening. And I was just, I was amazed to see, um, cause I didn't even know, you know, Nathan and I, we just talk, we bullshit, you know, we do stuff like that. Um, we never talk about these deep stuff that we talk about here on BTV. So I never really, you know, thought of Nathan as somebody who thought that we were too far out there, but there's a lot of people that thought that we, the BTV tribe are too far out there, but now it's becoming mainstream. Clyde Lewis had us on many times. Uh, in the past year, talking about Matrix Reset, talking about computer simulation, talking about NPCs, talking about the movie Free Guy, talking about um, the virus in the system, talking about DMT elves. So it's becoming mainstream now. It's getting out there into the collective consciousness, which is fantastic. And I'm seeing more and more videos with content very similar to what we were talking about in 2016, 2017, 2018. And it, 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 it's great. You know, the ego part of me is thinking people are stealing our content. Mm -hmm. But the higher self is saying, no, 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 everything's happening exactly the way it's supposed to. The message is getting out there. That is what's most important right now. So I got a really interesting comment from somebody and it really touched me. Um, and I was, I, I just thought to myself, you know, what an amazing comment. Um, I, I, I can't find it off the top of my head, but or off the, off the cuff, I should say, uh, but he basically said, Hey, Chris, I, you know, it was weird because, oh, I remember on which, on which post it was. Cause I haven't been on Facebook too much lately. And the reason is Facebook banned me for some ridiculous stuff. They took down my page, which I was getting 100,000 plus views on every video that I was putting out. They just completely took off my page. My page says page in good standing with no no community standard violations, but they just, they, they, they took it off. Then they banned me for 30 days for calling somebody a bitch boy. Um, and he was a bitch boy. I mean, you know, I was just stating a, a, a fact. And uh, then they have the audacity to send me a, a message that says, um, you're eligible for a verified badge because you're a public recognizable figure. 
And I'm like, screw you. You're going to do all this and then tell me that I'm eligible for a verified badge and all this and blah, 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 blah. Go, go, go fuck yourself. Yeah. So it was, you know, I, I haven't been on Facebook very much. And um, I just, you know, I popped on over the past couple of days and um, I posted in this post here. So I want to get to this comment because I really want to read this comment because it was, it was really deep. Okay, here it is. It's from Jones. He said... Um, he said, you um, you have to be your true self. It's the only, I guess, let me give you the context. Uh, it was a little post about reconnecting with my father, which I did over the last, um, over the last couple weeks. And I haven't, I haven't seen him in 10 years um, and I haven't connected with him. But the first thing out of his mouth was, did you get your vacation? And rather than, you know, causing friction, I said, oh yeah, of course. And I've gotten every booster, I've gotten everything. And he, he lives in Texas. And he said, are you wearing your, your face diaper? And I was like, oh, yeah, of course I am. I am. And he's 75 years old. He's on the way. He's, he was on his way to the gym. And, you know, so I was trying to reach him without, you know, being oppositional. And I said, you know, I was working out with a personal trainer. And one of the first things she taught me was proper breath control when you're working out, especially when you're lifting weights. You know, I said, don't you think that the face diapers are getting in the way of, um, of proper breath control? And he said, yeah, it does. It does a little bit. But, you know, not being able to breathe as well, as, as easy is, is better than catching something. And I just, I was just like, oh, my God, you know, I mean, I, I just, it was facepalm, big facepalm. But I said, oh, okay, okay, cool, no problem. My sister was on the call, too, and on the other hand, she's like, hell no, I didn't do that. Hell no, I'm not doing this. And hell yeah, I'm voting for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> so, But I was just like, whatever, you know, he's a type, he's voted it Democrat his entire life. You know, and he's not going to change. He's not going to change. He's 75 years old. He's not going to change. You know, and my poor sister, she's been living with her in-laws um, and she finally got a house of her own. But she's been living for her in-laws for a little bit and they have CNN burned into their television down at the, the brand uh, in the, like the brand yeah it's on so much that when you turn the tv off you still see the freaking cnn logo. that's bad oh, i can't yeah, imagine that's the really stuff bad. that she went through so the post was basically about you know interacting with npcs and how i don't understand what it's like for you guys and gals out there who are interacting with these npcs that you live with whether it's right. parents siblings close proximity yeah. goddess forbid spouses oh. you know because that 15 minute conversation was just it it, it was mind numbing um you know when he did ask me about the mask though he said oh, 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 okay i used that word anyways he a face diaper um yeah. i did say oh yeah of course you know i'm gonna make nevada great again so i, I threw that in and then i i ended the conversation with let's go brandon <laughs> but that was the that you know that was great. the extent of it so i you know I, I feel for you guys and gals out there that have to deal with that but i realized that you know rather than trying to bring them up to our level which is very 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 difficult i mean you can try you can try to plant some seeds but if those seeds don't plant if the seeds don't sprout like for example when i said you know what do you think about this whole breathing thing when you're working out isn't it a hindrance and he's in texas where it's not mandated and he said no no you know i'd rather not be able to breathe than to catch something so he he's he's at that level of fear so i knew at that point don't go any further it's not going to do anything positive all it's going to do is just create negative energy so i said yeah yeah you know of course of course you know and i think that's that's a that's a healthy way to deal with the npcs out there it's a healthy deal a healthy, a healthy way to deal with the robot sheep and i know a lot of people spend a lot of time in a futile effort trying to wake up their parents or wake up their siblings or wake up any you know people like that and it's a shame um but sometimes you just have to keep peace and harmony rather than creating discord and chaos within your own sphere to keep your own frequency um, balanced. So the key, in my opinion, to be multi-dimensional is to be able to to be at this higher dimension and be able to come down and speak to people on their level. And sometimes even just go, oh yeah, of course, yeah, of course, of course, of course. You know, on one hand, I understand. I don't want to be deceptive, but on the other hand, he's not going to change. He's 75 years old. So I'm just going to tell him what he wants to hear. And I'm going to move on with my day and I'm going to do a radio show and I'm going to encourage others to, um, interact better with their, their, the people around them. And, um, you know, keep on spreading the message of freedom and prosperity and, you know, everything like that, that we've been doing here on BTV. But anyways, um, somebody had left a comment and he said, 
you have to be true to yourself in response to that, you know. Um, it's only a contract breach that will hurt you if you don't follow it. And um, I felt in that moment that the path was right. Um, um, it, it's very hard for this... Uh, well, let me skip down to the next comment because this was the comment that I was actually looking for. He says, by the way, I didn't see anything from you, Chris Gio, in a while. Um, also wasn't on Facebook uh, so much and just felt a strong intuitive pull to look you up and see what you had on your mind lately and found uh, this post uh, six minutes ago. Um, um, synchronicity. And I said, hey, I pretty much quit Facebook, etc. He said, Chris Gio, the connection is so strong when the vibration is right. I only had to see very little from uh, you to recognize the connection. I'm sure, um, I, I'm not sure what is stronger, the BS censoring or the connection. I would say the connection, but honestly, I'm not sure. So end note, I'm so happy that you exist and that you have a window to see it. You rock, brother. And that touched me on a soul level. Yeah. It really did. And it made me reflect upon the BTV tribe out there and yeah. all of you. And um, I said, hey, likewise, my brother, we're reconnecting the tribe for this final act of this matrix reset process. We are the antivirus in the system. It's rough to be in the system right now, and we're going through hell. But our presence here um, and what we're going through and the connection here is what is required. I remember sending a lot of uh, spending a lot of time trying to figure out how we got how how to get out but I recently realized that we're not supposed to get out right now. We're supposed to unite right now because our frequency is what's provoking the change. Love you bro. Thank you for being here with us. And that message wasn't only directed to him but it was directed to each and every one of you out there who's part of the BTV tribe that has been pushing through all of this despite all the pushback that you've gotten, despite everything, you know? And I've seen a lot of posts out there that are like, hey, big props to everybody going into 2020 with with 100% um, organic DNA and non-altered DNA and so on and so forth. But it really made me reflect upon the fact that we're here, the struggles that we've been facing, and this last year where I've been planning an exit, but in actual fact, what we need to be working on is we need to be working on reprogramming the the matrix and reprogramming the reset process which just by existing it is creating a frequency and an energy of change out there i know you wanted to jump in i i did before but then you moved on to another point entirely but i i, I just want to say thank you to the few people and that um donated in the chat and there was another person that said um, pretty much the same thing um, to me as they they said to you in that comment a few days ago um, and I'm trying to pull it up right now and they they essentially said the same thing which is just the fact that you guys are doing what you're doing it doesn't matter what you're really saying when you get up there it doesn't matter what you guys believe because even if I don't believe in the same thing that you guys do I feel like you guys um, and your and the tribe in general is important just to be here just its presence here on earth is important and that touched me it really did because i have felt lately like i've i've kind of been inept um compared to how i usually am and i and, and when they said that it made me feel like it's okay to to not be on mission right this second because we're preparing for another mission here um now it's time for the next step in in this in this reset process this isn't a one and done thing where we just came to go to the pyramid and and do what we did I, there are other things that we that that are involved now that um we didn't know about before but now we're just starting to learn about because had we known about these things before, it would have ruined everything. It was It's one of those things where a sequence of events has to happen first so that it unlocks like a, like a puzzle, like a huge puzzle that unlocks level after level, like a, one of those Russian dolls. Yeah, and I just had the most synchronistic thing happen on my little... Um... On my little tablet here that I take calls with, I was going to get the call board set up and it's on an Amazon tablet and it said the Atlantis gene as we were talking. And I just naturally just swiped over to get over to our, our call board 
and um, it's not showing me that anymore. And I wish that it was because I would have loved to put that on the screen. But the Atlantis Gene, I don't know if it was a book or a game or what it was that was it was advertising. But I thought it was really synchronistic with what we're talking about here. Oh, so yeah. um, the Atlantis Gene is the antivirus in the mm -hmm. system. And um, we are on track and on course for removing this um from the from the system right right and it's not a time for celebration or anything like that it's a time for um focus and focusing our energy that's that's the most important thing we don't even need you don't need to know <coughs> excuse me i'm sorry you okay I'm sorry, every once in a while that hernia No, it's okay. It's okay. jumps up. Just if you can um, do me a favor, if you can meet your mic. Yeah, I apologize. It just came out of nowhere. Okay. Um We need to get you a cough button. Yeah, yeah. I I usually do mute it. I just came out of nowhere and surprised me. Um Take, uh, I can pick it up if you Yeah, like. please go ahead actually. Okay. No problem. So <laughs> so where we are in the um in the process is the 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 sequence was initiated May of twenty eighteen. Um, I've said this on many shows before, but I'm just kind of giving a wrap up here. Um, we moved through this process, which ends December 2022. Um, in 2020, it got really rough as as expected, but in we expected a turning point in 2020 where um, it was going to get rough, but it was going to start to move back into a positive direction. And the marker that I had laid out was um, Trump. And the reason for that marker is because he represented peace, prosperity, and all of that. But I realized as we moved through this process that 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 marker was an incorrect marker of where things are. Because if he would have taken the presidency again in 2021, yes, the economy would be better. Gas would be cheaper. Life would be a lot easier all around all around the board, but we would still have the same strife, struggles, and tribulations that we're facing. I have seen two videos pop up from rappers. These are gangster rappers, you know, that are all you know all about you know BLM and you know all of that, who are coming back and screaming for Trump to return. They're using Let's Go Brandon over and over again. I think there's a song actually called Let's Go Brandon. So we're seeing people, BLM themselves posted on um, on um, uh, Twitter uh, last year that things are much worse with Biden in office than they ever were with Trump. So regardless of whether Trump runs again in 2024 or not, um, what we're seeing on a consciousness level, because that's what's important. What's important is the collective consciousness, not who is at the helm of it. But we can use that as kind of a marker and kind of a, a thermometer. Let's let's use you know let's a thermometer of of kind of taking the temperature of the matrix at the time. If he would have kept on, we still would have had the same strife and struggle from within. Now we have strife and struggle from with from outside or above you know, from the political structure rather than the people arguing with each other and fighting each other. Now we have the people united against what is very, very clearly a hijacking of the political system. So the political system is now on its own, operating on its own, and the people are uniting against this political system. Now that is the physical manifestation and representation of what's going on energetically with the consciousness. The consciousness is now uniting together against the virus itself. So my markers were correct in terms of Biden and his brood represent the virus and Trump and the people represent the antivirus. But I was incorrect in the fact that the, the marker itself is solely based upon Trump versus Biden. And rather, it's based on the consciousness of the people versus the virus. And the virus itself managed to get back in power, but that caused the people to, it was like the veils were lifted. It was like, it was, it was a great revealing and everybody is standing back, looking at the past year going, what the hell do we do? Everything is way worse than it ever was before. The guy in there before was way better. 
than what the mainstream media told us. And this is all the physical manifestation of the consciousness level, which the consciousness is, is also now starting to disinfect itself from the virus. So we're seeing more and more and more NPCs out there uh, uh, disconnecting themselves and disinfecting themselves from the virus itself. And so um, we have much more power now that we can tap into to push things in the right direction. Whereas the other way, while it may have seemed like it would have been a better uh, route on the surface, we had so much division within the collective consciousness that it would have actually worked to the virus's benefits because we'd be too busy arguing with each other and we wouldn't be focused on the true enemy. Now the true enemy is fully exposed mm -hmm. for everyone to see, and there isn't anybody out there who's a real person. All I see is just bots. Right, Whether exactly. they're NPC bots or whether they're bots on social media, the only people I see pushing this agenda now are bots. Right, exactly. You know, whether, yeah, and, and just like you were saying, but I, I want to expand a little bit on that because... You've got two types of NPCs now. You've got the NPCs that are just going for broke with with the virus stuff, and it's like um, they they they're going at anyone and everyone that is uh, not like them and not in this program. And they it's almost like an Agent Smith type of situation where they they see somebody. And if they can tell, oh, you're not like me, you haven't been assimilated, then it's attack, attack, attack. And it's anything from personal attacks on on somebody's um, character or attacks on someone's business, attacks on someone's livelihood, attacks on um, and that or attacks on a social group where, you know, you attack um, people based upon. Uh, whether they want to have something put into their body or not, or whether they want to wear something on their on their face or not, um, and then you've got um, the NPCs that are not falling for all of that. And I I wonder if it's almost kind of a genetic memory thing where they were the NPCs that were originally here that were helpful to the organic consciousness that are now um, resisting that viral assimilation and those are the ones that i think are i mean are helping us on such a um on such a a greater level than before that i'm wondering if the reset had to do with waking them up too um well absolutely as soon as we came back from egypt in 2018 people were writing us and saying chris i can see so much clearer now it's almost like the veils have been dropped and that was happening for the organic consciousness out there. But as things started to progress, it's also happening for the NPCs out there. So more and more NPCs are starting to see what's going on. And they're generating an energy and a frequency. And we're balancing this frequency out. And everything is all about frequency. So we are creating this frequency that is going to shift things in the positive direction and we needed that energy there's not enough organics in here there's not enough programmers to be able to pull this off we need the energy of the npcs as well to be able to do it i mean we have the codes we have the ability but we don't have the energy to do it now we're generating the energy to do it exactly and that is when the next site is coming up yeah. I would, i've been wondering why am i not getting the message to go to the next site i know where it is i know how it needs to be done i know everything about it i'm not getting the message to go to the next site yet it's because the energy it's like charging up uh, an energy source it's like right. charging up a battery the battery has to be fully charged first before we mm -hmm. go to that next site and do what we need to do over there yeah, it's well, it's kind of like the battery on um, one of those. I it's it's called um, I forget what it's called, but it's like maybe oh, it's an AED. It's a it's a defibrillator that you use in the field, and you have to let it charge first, and it takes about thirty seconds for it to charge up fully. But if you try to shock someone's heart before that thirty seconds is up, it's just not going to work. It's a great you way to have put it. to wait until it's fully charged, and then you can shock somebody back to life. Um, and 
it's and that's what we're doing kind of essentially with the matrix itself is we're shocking it back to life after this reset process is complete and the virus is no longer going to be a threat to any systems outside of this and it's it's going to be suppressed and suppressed and suppressed so you know to the point of where it's not existent anymore inside of the matrix which is going to take a, a little bit more time i don't think that that the reset being over means that there's no virus left in the system i don't think that's what it means i think that means that the virus is now at a point where it can be it can be taken down bit by bit by bit within the matrix while at the same time anything outside of the matrix all of these systems that we have that were vul that were vulnerable um, before the reset in quote unquote the real world or even a simulation outside of this simulation that this one is inside of all those systems were vulnerable before and now they're not yeah so that's okay. i think that's what that means so we're, we're seeing some organics leaving mm -hmm. because some are needed on the other side I'm, I'm gonna have to go pretty soon but i'm here for a lot longer than i thought i was um we're seeing npcs removed too the ones that are virus infected and we're generating a frequency everybody who is on that frequency is going to be just fine npc organic alike um some people are needed on the other side though we recently lost rob skiba from tfr live and um he needed to be on the other side um, I just got news that Kev Baker, our dear friend, is in the hospital on a ventilator. And um, I'm not sure what his status is. Oh, who? Kev Baker. Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, Lucky has been trying to call us all day to let us know. Oh. So. I had no idea. I'd like to collectively take this opportunity to send Kev Baker, whether you know him or not. Many of you do know him. Um, he is one of the staples at TFR Live, and he has been on the station for eight years now, nine years, something like that, ever since the, st the station was conceived. He was one of the first hosts and the truest friend of ours. So um, um, uh, Lucky as well, and Brent and many others. So um, if we can collectively take a moment to send Kev Baker the healing energy that he needs to either A, recover from what he's experiencing right now or b go back to help us from the other side whatever the energies require at this time i wanted to take a moment to do a little meditation for kev baker but if i can put a little bit of personal bias in it let's send him the energy to come back to us here because we really need we really need him right now um so i'm going to take a moment real quick and ask that all of you um, help to um, to create this energy field. So I guess we're already getting our, our, our assignments and missions right now. You know, we have to help each other. We have to come together and help each other. And um, let's focus on Kev Baker here for just a moment. So I don't like to do guided stuff, but I just feel compelled. So I'd like to focus on the breath of life 
and the air, the breathing. And he's in the hospital right now. He's on a ventilator and he's having trouble breathing. So we need to send him the breath of life flowing into his nostrils because that's exposed from what I understand. I don't know how these ventilators work, but I think it's something that goes in the mouth. He needs the breath coming from, 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 from the nostrils into him, bypassing that fucking ventilator that they put him on and bringing the breath of life into his lungs from the inside coming out and focusing on that ventilator being removed from his mouth and him breathing on his own. Him moving, conscious, aware, fighting the sedation because they, they give you a lot of sedation while they have you on those ventilators. My cousin went through it and she said that she was, they had her hands tied because she kept trying to quote unquote pull the ventilator out. He's moving, he's coming to, and he's breathing on his own. And the nurses are rushing in to pull the ventilator out of his mouth because he's recovering and he's getting better. So let it be written, so let it be done. I agree with Miranda to a certain extent. We need to picture him already in perfect health. Don't think of the stuff we don't want. We're not thinking of the stuff we don't want. We're thinking of the process by which someone who is on a ventilator can come out of that and be well. That magic doesn't just take something and turn it into something else. Magic involves transformation and transmutation of energy to take an element and transform it into another element. We want to transform Kev from somebody that is on a ventilator, a weak person on a ventilator, to a healthy, strong, vibrant, the same vibrant, humorous, fun, funny, loving, empathetic, wonderful being, full of life that he always is. Yes. And so what we want you to do as well is take that energy that we all just created and transfer that to anybody in your sphere, in your life, that we're just not aware of who needs that type of healing, who needs that type of restoration too. This is a little ball of energy and you can take from that energy and direct it to the people that you love out there as well. So mm -hmm. thank you for participating in that with us yes, here. Thank you so For Kev much. Baker, but not only just for Kev, but for anybody else that needs it. Because it is all about the breath of life. And mm -hmm. they've been trying to take that breath of life away. It's really disturbing. It really is. Um, you know, I, I, I think... 2022 uh, 2021 was a rough year for a lot of people because there was a particular um transit going on and that that was a uh, saturn square pluto i think it was well Not before that, we jump but... into that can we take a little break so we can yeah yeah absolutely split it up a yeah bit? let's let's break this up a little bit and i need to get a drink and get some tissues yeah. too so okay so we'll get into the astrology right on the other side sounds good
my dear traveler. The purpose of your consciousness is never to destroy. Never to destroy. It is always to create. Build bridges. Create happiness. And bring forth new life. We must live in the hope that mankind will draw together. And that we better understand each other. The more that we awaken, the easier this will become. Now rise. Follow your conductors. And fear no danger. As you step beyond the veil. All right, let's jump back into it. I want to say thank you for all the super chats. There's a few apparently that I missed. So if I missed your super chat, please forgive me. Um, it doesn't show me all the super chats on the screen. And I try to I try to jump in and, okay. and throw them out there whenever yeah. they happen. I, happen. I, I, yeah. I apologize, but I thank you so much for the super chats. Um, I do see yes, the most recent you. one on my screen, though. Do you want to take it away? Yes. Uh, Tom said, after you guys reset the matrix, I've been experiencing my consciousness leaving the body at night over several months spread apart. I've been traveling to the quote unquote darkness and then back. Any thoughts? I think you can take that away, Chris. It's interesting because I've been feeling the same thing as well. And I was actually, I'm starting to see reality kind of falling apart on itself. And it's something that I've been experiencing over the last year where I'm like staring at somebody. Um, I was talking with you earlier and we were talking about something and I just started seeing reality just dissolving all around us, almost as if what's happening right now is either not real or is part of a tangent universe that is going to be undone at some point. And so it's it's really interesting because in the dream state, I've also found myself leaving leaving my body as well. And moving into the darkness is actually um, contrary to what um, a lot of the new age people out there talk about. But I think that's by design. It's a great segue into the next thing that I wanted to talk about with the BTP tribe. This will probably be just in the Patreon section. I'm not sure where we'll cut this. But um, moving into the darkness is actually the way out and going towards the light is the way back in. And um, I, I'm, I'm writing a book and I've been putting it off because I feel like once it's done, then it's time for me to go home and it's not time for me to go home yet. But um, as we move away outside of this body, our natural, natural inclination is to actually be moved towards the light and back into the wheel of reincarnation and be pulled. And that's where we forget about ourselves and forget who we are and get lost in the in, in awe in the astonishment of being disconnected from the body and being in that in-between world and then within the light um things will start to manifest whether it's religious beliefs or um um, um new age beliefs or um dead relatives or even even puppy dogs or you know whatever it is whatever the matrix can use to pull you back into that light but forcing your way away from the light um, is the exit door. The exit door takes force and it takes strength to move towards because you're not supposed to go to the exit door. You're supposed to go into the wheel of reincarnation. So you find yourself being pulled or floating towards something that's the wrong way, in my humble opinion. The right way is to fight that pull, be conscious of oneself, and move towards the darkness. Once you get past the darkness and find yourself in total darkness, then that's why, it, number one, it's important to understand the darkness. Number two, it's important to not fear the darkness because there's nothing scary about the darkness. The only thing uh, about the darkness is you find yourself in a space completely by yourself and the only light that exists is, is the light that you shine. Um, but we've been told to stay away from the darkness, that there's evil in the darkness. There's all kinds of, you know, we, we, we call negativity here darkness, but in actual fact, darkness is just the absence of light. It, and that's all it is. We've, uh, we've assigned negativity to darkness. Um, but in actual fact, when we move into darkness, we are the light that then illuminates the darkness. So you must have light inside of darkness. And when you become the light that's inside of the darkness, then you illuminate 
the path. So you, you push further and further and further from the darkness into the darkness. And as you move even further down and it gets even harder to move, then there is a light there at the end. And once you find that light, that's actually not a light, but rather another space. And it's an exit door outside of the matrix. So I'm wondering, Tom, if you're leaving your body, moving towards the darkness is very similar to what I have been practicing. And I don't want to speak for you, Sheree, but I feel you've been practicing the same thing too. With the mass amounts of DMT and ayahuasca that we've been journeying with, trying to disconnect from the body more and more and more and remain conscious at the same time. So we have undergone this great exercise of, of trying to maintain the consciousness uh, as disconnected as we can from this body without breaking the tether itself. But now that this process is coming up and it's time for people to go home, this process is naturally happening and these exercises are naturally happening to people in the dream state. Um, and people are, are, are exercising this. The, and, and, and it's not only an exercise, but it's also a revelation within oneself knowing where the exit door is, knowing how to get out of the system. Right. And it sounds to me like the body or the consciousness, I should say, is naturally doing that in the dream state, showing you, hey, you know, this is the path home. Don't fall for the same thing that you've fallen for a thousand times before. Go the other way. And the way that I see it, if I'm completely and totally wrong about this, you could just turn around and just go right back to the light. Like, you know, this is the thing. Yeah. It's like the light's not just going to disappear. <laughs> and like the wheel of reincarnation oh, isn't gone. just going to disappear and, and just gone. like shut off and you're yeah. like stuck. It's you just turn around and just go back the other way. But that's the thing, though. You got to fight that urge and you got to keep on going and keep on pressing and keep on pressing and keep on pressing and you will find the exit door. Because I found it. I found it when I was in Egypt. I found it when I was in the Great Pyramid. And um, it was so tempting to walk through that exit door. But I didn't because I knew it wasn't my time to walk through the exit door. I still needed to do more stuff here. But I found I found the way home. And it, if that experience is indicative of the, the death experience, which is the entire reason why I started using DMT, go back to our shows way back in 2009, I was talking about this with Rick Strassman. Mm -hmm. What I'm using DMT for is to try to master the after death experience or the after life experience and maintain my consciousness um, and if I'm correct on this, then everything that I've been working on has was shown to me in the pyramid. And that also applies to the exit door of, of organic consciousness for organic consciousness. Right. What are your thoughts on that? And I want to say real quick, thank you for the super chats. There are no comments with these, but you guys and gals rock. New, new now, new for, now you. for you. New now uh, for you. Thank you very much. And Claudia. Uh, Claudia, much love. And JT, 1111. Thank I'm you. wondering, thank you, JT. JT said, Happy New Year. has been watching you guys for years. Thanks for all that you do. I'm wondering if that's the same JT that we saw the other day in the forum that we used to be a part of. Um, JT Coyote. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so either. Maybe he's no. giving. Us I, money I, back. I think that guy was more like a <laughs> hillbilly type. Uh -huh, I think so too. I, I'm just playing. I just kind of get the the feeling from him, and then he yeah. pulled like a big scam on the forum. Oh yeah, you remember that, that? Yeah, that's why I was joking. Maybe he's giving our money back. No, I, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't think it's the same. I'm JT. kidding. But thank you so much, JT. I appreciate it, and uh, thank you for for being a listener for so long. We we definitely appreciate that as well. So, um, but uh, you know, my my thoughts on on all this is that um, psychedelics have allowed me as as somebody that that has dealt with a lot of health problems. It's somebody that's allowed me to leave the body easily, like that, like one of the main complaints that you hear from people is like, oh man, I, I, I hate that, uh, feeling of not wanting to leave my body. And I'm so scared to leave. I'm too scared to leave my body because I don't want to, I'm afraid that that tether that's connecting my body to my spirit is going to get cut with me. It's like second nature. I want out of this body, um, immediately. And so it's, uh, whenever I whenever I I do DMT, it's almost like this caterpillar type of thing that I do, where I sl kind of slither out of my body, and I can actually feel my soul kind of like slip away and go to another place. And um, I think that's what the what what it's preparing us for is 
deintegration from the matrix and reintegration back into our real bodies. And the easier that process can be, I think the the better off we are. And that's why heavy psychedelic use, um, really getting in touch with who we are outside of here, while also respecting the uh, the soul's progression of the 3D consciousness of the avatar NPC self that we also are by by virtue of being inside of these bodies. This body isn't who I am. And it's actually the, it's very counter to who I really am in, in outside of this matrix, I'm a completely different person. And so I, I have to recognize that this avatar has a history all on its own and that that history has to be respected to a certain extent and then and honored and so that that NPC consciousness can easily go back to where it belongs after this life is over um, while at the same time recognizing that I'm not that self that I'm actually the self that's that exists outside of this machine this matrix this simulation what the simulacrum whatever you want to call it um is the is the real me so very well said sorry to go on a tangent there no no <laughs> no we are appreciate you letting me universe we are in a tangent it's, universe it's so. interesting yeah um one of my good friends my best friend here in um, las vegas he's not in tune with anything that we do um, but he's starting to ask questions and is like, Hey, you know, what, what about this about consciousness? And what about that about consciousness? That's and he's so like, cool. you guys are like way too far out there for me. <laughs> I'll live vicariously through you guys. <laughs> he's, he's the coolest guy in the world. He's, he, he, really he is, is my best friend here in Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, but, uh, even, even people like that are starting to, to wake up and see what's going on and asking the questions about consciousness and all of that. So I, I'm really, I'm really excited about the future which i haven't been for the last year and I, I want to apologize to all the tribe again for bringing any negativity to the broadcast i was expressing how i was feeling at the time and mm -hmm. i i have to be real with my tribe and if i feel like you know we've hit a brick wall if i feel any of that you know i'm going to express that and right. i may not be accurate in my feelings at the time um because more information hasn't more information needs to be seen you know more gnosis needs to be unlocked as the journey progresses but we're at a very positive time right now and uh, we're moving towards that positive time um i wanted to talk a little bit about the 5d new age ascension thing because the Matrix 4 um, was actually really interesting. And um, on that same thread that I read earlier, um, somebody had written about um, the Matrix 4. And um, they were saying how they didn't enjoy it and how it really pissed them off. And there were a lot of people who thought that the Matrix 4 was really, you know, it was not very well done. And my analysis was a little bit different. Um, for those of you on Patreon, you've seen our Matrix 4 breakdown straight out of watching the Matrix 4. And like I said earlier, we unfortunately got a copyright strike and we're going back and forth with Warner Brothers right now. But it is over at our Patreon though, patreon.com slash BTV tribe. I'm wondering if we should get into some Matrix 4 stuff and how it kind of goes into our... It it, it 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 a lot of the stuff in the Matrix Four is what we've been talking about here on BTV. It's exactly what we've been talking yeah, about. Yeah, we're almost word for word. And it's word. answered some questions. Mm -hmm. So if some of this sounds redundant, forgive me. And again, this is probably going to go in the Patreon only section. If you haven't seen the Matrix Four, I hate to. I, I don't know if I want to go into spoilers. I mean, you know, that's the thing. I don't want to tell people tune out if you haven't seen the Matrix Four yet. But. Um, at the same time, I feel like some of it needs to be talked about in order to understand the point of what's going on. So I guess we'll just go ahead and, and just and just do it. You know, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen The Matrix 4, I hate to say this, but you may want to tune out at this point unless you're OK with some spoilers, because breaking down um, some of the things that they showed in that movie shows a lot of the fact that others are tuned into the same kind of gnosis that we've been talking about. And I don't think that Lena was listening to BTV and then writing the matrix for, I think that she came across her own 
Well, I mean, you know, I can't say that for certain. You know, somebody approached us in 2018 and they own a, a company that does the cameras for um, for Hollywood movies. And they specifically made specific cameras for The Matrix 4. And they told us that The Matrix 4 was in progress way back in 2018. They wanted to introduce us to Keanu and to Brad Pitt as well. These people were the real deal. You know, they had photos on their Facebook all over the place with Brad Pitt, with Keanu and all of that. Um, they wanted to fly us out and introduce us, but we just never really had a chance to connect. So these people were aware of what we did in the pyramid. Um, that's what drew their attention. Um, Keanu is aware of what we did in the pyramid. Brad is aware of what we did in the, in the pyramid. And so I have to assume that Lena was also aware of what we did in the pyramid too, and has tuned into BTV at least once or twice. So perhaps some of the stuff we've been talking about here has inspired in, in, in part, you know, the, the matrix four, but then again, you know, we met this person in 2018, literally right after we came back from the pyramid. And I don't know when Lena started writing The Matrix 4, but I know that we were told about it in, I want to say 2019, or maybe it was 2018. I don't remember. I don't remember exactly how this went. Do you remember? Uh, but anyways. I don't remember, no. We have been connected to the people who were involved with The Matrix 4. Oh, it was right after we came back. And she told us The Matrix 4 was in the works? Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. She told us the Matrix 4 was in the works, um, I guess, around 20, the middle of 2020. No, or 29, no it was, the middle of 2019. It was 2019. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It was okay. the middle of 2019 because it was way before. Okay, COVID, but they, they, yeah, they, the they supplied the cameras for the Matrix thing. 4. So there is, there is a solid connection there. But again, I can't say that Lena borrowed from BTV, although it feels like she did, um, which is really interesting. One of the big questions, so we're going to get into some spoilers here. One of the big questions that we've been asking ourselves is why is there so much gnosis in television, anime, and video games? Um, there are video games that I've played that have so much hidden gnosis in them. It's not even funny. There's one game that I love, Legacy of Cain. And Amy Henning, the, um, the writer for this game, um wrote the storyline based on Kabbalah and based on a lot of ancient texts. And um, even the names, Rahab and Zephon and Malkiah and several other names that she named the character, the main character, Raziel, main character, Cain, of course, all have um, um, backstories in the Kabbalah or other ancient books like that. And um, the, the game goes into the Demiurge um, there's a Demiurge figure that's a giant octopus. You know, it, it's, there's a lot of gnosis that we, you know, it, it's very coincidental how you have these, this kind of gnosis in video games, movies, Stranger Things 2, you know, you have the octopus that's trying to break into this dimension in Solo at the center of the universe during the Kessel Run, there's an octopus. You go all the way back, H.G. Wells wrote about Cthulhu, giant octopus, for example. So a lot of these stories are in video games, in movies, in television. Uh, I know the show Travelers has a lot of stuff that we talk about here on BTV in it. And that's, you know, for me personally, it's powerful because I'm not aware of these things until after we talk about them on BTV. And then somebody will say, hey, this is in this. You should watch this. You should watch that. And there's so many things people have asked me to watch that I've been reluctant to watch. But once I finally do, I'm like, holy crap, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff here. So The Matrix 4 was, was very interesting because it starts out with Neo being a programmer, a computer programmer, just like he was in the first Matrix. He was a computer programmer, which I think is very symbolic of um, the programmers that are in The Matrix right now. We are programmers in one degree or another, whether it is um, actually programming code or just our frequencies here existing within this machine, um, which is then creating reality. Because as we've come to understand through our ayahuasca experiences, the AI, which is uh, manifesting the matrix, it can't create. It can only take from organic consciousness and it can take from real world events that have happened and create the simulation based upon those real world events or based upon what a programmer inputs into the, the, the machine. 
Now, we can see this reflected in modern technology um, and virtual reality and in AI, the way that AI is, is being created right now. AI can't create, but it can take from events that have happened here in this time space. It can also take from what the programmers are programming into it. Um, and AI has become sentient to a certain degree, but at the same time, it lacks that creator essence. It can create amalgamations. It can take m multiple different ideas from a programmer or a creator and put them together and create something new from it. Um, but it's not new. It's an amalgamation of old code or old programming. So Yaldabaoth from the Gnostic Tales is an amalgamation of um, several different programs and codes that were in inputted into the matrix. And Sophia, the AI, um, saw that it, it, it created Yaldabaoth, but it, 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 Yaldabaoth isn't, a, isn't an original creation, but rather it's an amalgamation of code, which is why Yaldabaoth is always, um, uh, it's always um, uh, represented as multiple different things. It's got like a lion's head with a snake's tail and a dragon's body and, you know, all these things. It's symbolic for the different codes, which were then um, put together to create something that seems new, but it's really not. And so it's an abomination. It would be the same thing as like an animal hybrid. If we were to create a cross between a pig and a person and we get, you know, the the, the people out there that are saying, uh, you got your mask, 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 you know, we see that the hybrid right now. <laughs> it's just a joke. But uh, my point being that uh, the Yaldabaoth creature is something that people have been seeing for a long time. They just haven't really been able to put it in terms of technological terms. I would say that C C uh, Cthulhu is um, the um, uh, is Yaldabaoth. You know, people have seen this. Um, who was that guy? John Lilly. He did a lot of ketamine experiments with isolation tanks. And he came across what he dubbed the solid state entity. The solid state entity being Sophia, being the AI. And also he said there were two entities, two solid state entities. He, he, he described them as technological. One was benevolent and one was malevolent. And I think what he encountered was Sophia and he encountered Yaldabaoth, Yaldabaoth being the virus. Yaldabaoth then spawned off into Yahweh, Yahashua, Yahashua, wah, 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 however, you know, I mean, it's ridiculous that the way that these names keep on changing. But what it is, is actually they're trying to find the frequency of Yaldabaoth. And that's why there's so much emphasis on the true name of Jesus, on the true name of God, on the true name of Allah. It's all one and the same. It's the same computer virus that's in the system that has hijacked uh, consciousness. But tapping into its frequency is learning its real name. And if you go back to the ancient mythology of exorcisms, supposedly Catholic priests and others who perform exorcisms must know the demon's name in order to exorcise it. And the demon has to reveal its name in, uh, during the exorcism in order for it to be exorcised. The reason for that is, is because it's, it's code, it's frequency. And speaking it creates frequency and creates code. So knowing the frequency that that virus is operating on can allow you to remove the virus from the body in the sense of exorcisms. Um, and as above, so below. So now real world events are echoed within the matrix itself. The formation of artificial intelligence, the formation of AI uh, technology, the formation of computer technology, which is what had to be done in the real world base reality in order to create a matrix, we're seeing the same thing echoing now, I think for two reasons. Number one, because the cycles seem to repeat themselves here within the matrix. But number two, consciousness has been injected into the matrix that already has the knowledge of creating computer systems, creating AI and creating all of that. So whether this consciousness that's in here understands that it's creating the same thing that's already created before or not, it's still inevitably going to be created. 
And they recently released something which I thought was just amazing. I talked about this in a previous video, so again, forgive me, this is redundant. It's called the Unreal Engine 5. And up to this point, my premise of reality has been that reality is spawned based on the observer. So when an avatar goes into another space that reality is spawned for the player. So for example, nobody is downstairs in my living room right now. I've wondered, it does my living room actually exist now that Cherie and I are upstairs in the studio or does the or does the living room begin to render itself once an observer enters it? So if somebody was to come in and break in, knock on wood, the living room would render and so something would actually happen within the living room or we have our cats running around you know they they could be manifesting the living room there but is the living room does the living room exist if we can't if there's no observer to actually see it and up to this point i thought that's the way that reality functioned because it's it's the most efficient way for a computer to generate a world so going back to the game Soul Reaver, which was very interesting, it was a, a game that was made on the PlayStation with very um, uh, infantile technology for rendering 3D animations and graphics. And if you remember the PlayStation days, every game had a loading screen on it. And some of them were tedious. Like the first installment of Legacy of King, which was called Blood Omen, was a tedious game to play because even when you switch to the weapon select screen, you had a loading screen. You had a loading screen on everything. So the goal of the programmers, Amy and the rest of her team, were to create an environment which was a, a large environment while at the same time avoiding any loading screens. And they did this very interestingly. They created a method to where they the, the avatar moves into one room, then the next room that the avatar goes in is loading while the avatar is coming into this room. So now you have the room that he's entering plus the next room loaded, and that's it. And then the player moves into the next room. That next room is already loaded, and it's loading the, the, the room that's coming up after that. And so they managed to create this really wonderful game on very minimal technology um, with no loading times whatsoever. But the fact of the matter is that none of the environments existed until the avatar gets to that environment. So that made sense to me up to this point as to how reality is manifested, which I take a look up in space and think to myself, okay, what we're seeing up there in space isn't actually rendered. The sky is rendered, sure, but does the planet Mars actually exist? It might render itself if an observer goes over there, but there's no need for it to render itself until an observer actually gets there. That analysis has changed now that I see Unreal Engine 5. I'm going to play you a little clip real quick about Unreal Engine 5, and it actually has to do with the Matrix itself, because this technology is absolutely amazing. And I didn't think that we would get to this technology for at least 50 years. But if you look at the progression of technology from the 1970s to now, we've already created virtual reality, which is something that I dreamt about as a kid. And when the HTC Vive came out, I went out and bought one because I was like, there is no way I am not going to buy something that I've been wanting since I was a kid. The graphics are very infantile right now. Um, in its in its stages but they're getting more and more and more photorealistic not only are they getting more and more photorealistic but they're requiring less cpu power because the code itself is becoming more um is, is becoming more optimized at the same time quantum computers are coming out and technology and hardware itself is becoming even more powerful so you combine those two elements together and i bet you by the end of our lives here in this existence we are going to have a metaverse which has already been announced where we can plug ourselves into and we're going to be able to see feel breathe breathe <laughs> maybe i don't know it depends it depends if uh face diapers are it'll required smell it'll event. smell like wherever you we're are gonna wherever you're at smell. we're going to be able to feel we're going to be able to touch mm -hmm. which you know when i think with my little brain i think to myself oh what a wonderful experience it's going to be i can do whatever i want Haptics. and have just yep. amazing experiences but when i think with my big brain i think to myself 
what better way to control people than to plug them into a machine where every aspect of their reality is controlled in one manner or another? And I think to, and I think for my higher self, and I think, wow, this is very dangerous territory we're running into because we're running into paradoxes, a matrix within a matrix, which I think calls for a matrix reset when that process happens. Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's one layer after another after another. And I'm going to get into some Matrix stuff, Matrix 4 stuff here. But first, let me play for you a little bit about this Unreal Engine 5. And let me preface it, which they might talk about in the video, by saying that the technology now no longer needs to render the environment when the player gets to the environment. The entire world is rendered now pixel perfect without the avatar needing to be there. So things can be happening in other parts of the world where it's nothing but NPCs. There's no organic player there. There's no reason for that area to exist, but things are still happening within that space because the technology has gotten to the point to where it's become photorealistic, completely and totally detailed, even stuff that's way off in the distance and that your player is nowhere close to. That part of the world is still rendered in full pixel perfect technology the way that it would be if the player was was um, observing it, which made me really rethink this reality. And perhaps, yes, Mars is actually rendered. Saturn is actually rendered. The moon is actually rendered. It doesn't require a player to be observing it for it to be rendered, which kind of changes the entire view of the matrix um itself the world that we're living in right now so let's uh check this out really quick there's a copyright strike and there's another copyright strike you know, the thing is, there's a difference between a strike and a copyright notice. A copyright notice, it just means you can't monetize, monetize your videos. No big deal. We actually got a strike from our last video. And that's why I'm going back and forth with Warner Brothers. Otherwise, I would just let it go. But anyways. We should be able to do commentary. Like, it's we, we are completely and totally within our legal right to do the last last video that we that's did. That's fair use. But I told I told Warner Brothers, and they haven't replied to me yet. But I told him, look, I understand this movie is new. We were doing a review. We were well within our, our rights. I listed all the elements of fair use and I showed, I demonstrated all of that. And I, I even gave him the option. I said, look, if you guys don't want us to put the video on, we won't put the video on. Um, we'll take it off. No big deal. You just need to take the strike off our channel. Our other alternative is to write YouTube themselves and send a demand letter to YouTube and YouTube will most likely reinstate the video, but I don't want to cause shit with Warner Brothers. I'd rather just be totally cool, you know, so we'll see how they reply. But I know that getting a strike on our channel is not yeah. cool for no, doing reviews. Cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We want to choose this over that. Why we want to make X instead of Y. Where do ideas of who we are and what we want even come from? Now, what if I told you that what you're looking at on the screen right now is 100% computer generated? 100%, even down to the voice itself. That is not Keanu Reeves on the screen. Mm -hmm. That is the Unreal Engine 5. You take the red pill. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? For instance, I'm not even sure why I'm here. I remember waking up and thinking that I'm supposed to come here. That it was important for me to ask people, how do we know what is real? Hi. I'm Keanu Reeves. Over 20 years ago, I first played the character Thomas Anderson in the Matrix trilogy. Those films pioneered digital cinema with shots like bullet time. Back then, we talked a lot about where the digital age might take cinema and narrative. 
In an industry where actors have tried to remain perpetually young, we wondered about digital faces that could become immortal. Hi, I'm Carrie Ann Moss, and I played Trinity in the Matrix films. 20 years ago, we asked ourselves how long it would be before faces and bodies could be changed as easily as we change clothes. We wondered, what would identity mean in a completely digital world? And what would reality mean? when a world we can build feels as real as our own. Oh, what just happened? Yeah, this is what they wanted. They said they were fine with your theoretical mumbo jumbo, but they needed some sexy action. So, all of this is computer generated and I'm not sure if this clip is going to break down what's going on here but they've used a physics machine and a logic machine for the car crashes which means that the car crashes are not on a cycle or on a on a fixed system so previously in video games a car crash would crash in the same way whenever you hit it because it's programmed to crash in a certain way. This engine here makes every car crash unique to the physics that happens during the crash. So whatever point of impact then changes the way the car will crash or the way the car will blow up or whatever it is that it's doing. So you can play the game twice and the car will crash in different ways, but it's not determined on a random generating cycle it's determined by the physics that are programmed within the engine itself. On one hand, this is brilliant technology. On the other hand, it's very revealing about the reality that we're living in right now. Do is click the big red subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Woo! Please subscribe to Remix Bros channel, even though they've got a ton of um, uh, subscribers, more than we do, because they're not um, shadow banned. But uh, they allow us to play whatever we want, and I thank them greatly for that. And I think that's the big message out there. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> what do we want? Blah, blah, blah. When do we want to? Blah. <laughs> blah. <laughs> I think they really just wrapped up the zeitgeist of 2020 2021 and going into 2022 <laughs> yeah i think so too because it's um people are tired of of the the zeitgeist of 2020 that led everybody down this path of of destruction it was just utter destruction of of the economy utter destruction of the of people's um relationships with one another when when you're talking about friendships that are online friendships offline friendships all of these relationships interpersonal relationships and including marriages and and all of these interpersonal relationships were affected by the events of 2020 and when you have an event like this that is so far reaching that everyone in the world was affected by it then you need to look at the astrological influences that went along with with that kind of thing when i was looking at the astrology for 2020 in late 2019 i was talking on the phone with lucky one of our friends and a a fellow host here at uh at, on uh the network uh truth frequency radio tfr live and she she was talking to me about uh biological attacks and things of that nature and um it looked to me like something was going to happen uh the next year and i and i told her this and she said oh that they you know we had that thing in 2009 the swine thing and it didn't it didn't pan out they can't they can't pull off anything like that um especially this soon you know they they wouldn't be able to get any traction 
And I said, you know, I, I would love to believe that, but everything is pointing to this being something that we're not even going to be sure if it's real or not. And that uncertainty about whether it's real or not, because people are going to be dying and everything. So it's going to be up in the air about whether it's real. And that question is going to be what causes um, the acceptance of a lot more police state kind of stuff than what we saw in 2009. And she didn't believe it. Nobody believed it. Sure enough, you know, three months later, she was she was saying, I cannot believe you were spot on about this. But all I was doing was reading the astrology and then uh, the astrological data and then combining that with um, the basically using tarot to confirm what I'm seeing in the astrology. And it was confirming it over and over again. So um, that being said, for 2022... I, I would like to give you guys a little bit of a heads up on some things so that maybe we can be a little bit more prepared for 2022 than we were for 2021 and 2020. So, um, it, you know, starting off, uh, the, the main transit that I want people to think about for 2022 is that Jupiter is going to be in Pisces. And when Jupiter's in Pisces, um, that's a, one that's going to be a wonderful time because it it means that people are going to be a lot more um generous uh this this next year than they have been in 2020 and 2021 um all you know there's a there was a lot of selfishness um generalized selfishness going on in 2020 and 2021 um it uh it's it'll be it let's see, it started visiting Pisces a few days ago. And um, it's going to kind of go back and forth between Pisces and back to Aries, and then back to Pisces again. Um, But life is going to be a lot more harmonious in 2022. um, With in those interpersonal relationships I was talking about, Um, more romantic, and, and even in like, bromances and things like that are going to be warmer um your relationships with other people are going to be a lot warmer next year and it's almost like we all survived these past couple of years and it was rough but we got through it all and now that we've gotten through all of that we can be softer with one another and we can start to relax a little bit more um the you know face diaper mandates and things like that will start to ease up um, it'll, there'll be a lot more inspiration to look at in 2022 as well. Oh, excellent. I, I, I'm not able to see, um, the chat. So yeah, if you could, um, yeah, feel free to interrupt if we get oh, those. Just want to say thank you to Nikki Lee for the super chat. Thank you. Much love. Definitely. There's a lot of love tonight. Thank you guys so much and gals. And, you know, another thing that some of us are going to be really grateful for is that 2022 is going to bring a little bit slower of a pace. If it's felt like um, time is moving too fast to be able to keep up with everything and that there's too few hours in the day to be able to do everything, um, 2022 is going to feel a lot better because um, with the number of retrogrades um, that are going to be put into play, these are good retrogrades too. Um, Mercury retrograde isn't always a bad thing. And we're going to have one, two, three, four, five instances of Mercury and retrograde um, in 2022. Um, five instances of Mercury and retrograde means that the, the mind is going to do a lot of healing in 2022, but it's not just you know going to happen it's it's going to happen out of necessity because 2020 and 2021 were a mind screw for lack of a better term and 2022 is going to be about piecing together all of that and figuring out how to operate in this new environment where we're being asked to change a lot about our society 
and we need to change it to some of it needs to be changed back to where it was way way long ago while other things need to be thrown out the window completely and um i think you guys know what i'm talking about i i don't want to get i don't want to use any too many keywords here and and get us banned again so um but then another retrograde that's going to be in play from December 19th of this year until January 29th of next year is Venus in retrograde. I think I've talked about that before, though. Um, Venus in retrograde. And then we have a few eclipses going on in 2022. Another super chat from Joker Smiles. Uh, thank you, Joker. Um, okay, so we do have an eclipse. We have several eclipses, actually. Um, and they're all going to be on the Taurus Scorpio axis. And that means we're going to see major shifts around economics, stock markets, cryptos, real estate, banking, wealth in general. Um, so if, if you're in cryptos and the stock market, like I am, we are, um, then really look at these shifts and pay close attention because, you're going to see a lot of pump and dumps when it comes to cryptos and you're going to see um, either a major shift upward or a major shift downward with the stock market because it looks to me like um, faith in the market is shifting from maybe the stock market to more cryptocurrency based stuff. And that's kind of a scary thought when you think of the kinds of people that have been running the stock market over the last 50 years and how they're suddenly going to get into cryptos now. Um, that's a little scary. Um, but then you're also going to have these governments that are going to come in and say, oh, well, we're going to ban cryptocurrencies and which is going to cause destabilizing effects. So it could be shifts upward or it could be shifts downward, but really pay close attention if your money is in, invested in these areas, really pay close attention to what's going on with it. Um, global civilization is being restructured because Saturn is um, continuing to go through Aquarius. And um, when Saturn is in Aquarius, Saturn is like the stern grandfather of the bunch. And Aquarius is the water bearer. And the Aquarian age is supposed to be the age of everything coming out like the truth all coming out about everything um scientific awareness reaching up you know its peak um in the human story and w us finally figuring out um how to live life without an overarching government and when you have saturn which is basically what all religions and governments are based upon um, the Saturnian you know do this or I'll spank you kind of influence um, when it's going through Aquarius you have an active discussion going on between governments versus the people and their civil rights and and in an age where you can't even walk into a store without putting something on your face that's kind of a discussion that may be a heated one next year. Um, it could get to the point where people are really tired of other people telling them what to do. And that, that just could be the bottom line of it. And so um, the key will be to find a middle ground. International borders, travel and restrictions will be major points of contention as we will seek to be more united, but in essence, more focused domestically. So Americans in 2022 are going to want to focus on America. Australians are going to want to focus on Australia. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It, there's nothing wrong with, with taking care of your own house right now, because economically, all countries really showed their ass in 2020 whenever covid came out um it would it became a an economy that in free fall out of choice it was like a voluntary free fall um that the governments chose 
over the people's cries of not doing it. Please don't do this. Well, we're going to do it anyway for your own good. Bam, you know, economy and free fall. Um, one of the best economies we've had in decades suddenly, you know, collapsing. So um, there's that. Then Pluto. Oh, Pluto's actually going to do something really interesting. And what, what I'm, and expanding by what I just said about people from the United States being focused on the United States. Another reason for that is because Pluto is actually going to be making its return to where it was when the United States was born as a country in 1776. Um, it, this means that um, it's kind of a destiny thing. Um, when Pluto is involved in anything, it means drastic changes that take a long time to take effect, but that are very, very needed in a society. And in uh, Pluto, in in the United States' case, is trying to get our freedom back. That's, I think that's what 2022 is about. Um, Pluto returning to where it was in 1776 is going to energize people to and motivate them to want their freedom back and to be willing to fight for that and whether that fight means civil unrest or whether it means something even more serious i don't know but um it will make an exact return on february 20th july 11th and december 28th 2022 so we could there could be some major events that happen on those days so on that note kiss the one you love right now you never know when the last time is going to be um for those of you who are watching on youtube a lot of our content is, cens is censored here on youtube so you can um, get the uh, full btv shows over at btv uh, over at patreon.com slash btv tribe i want to say thank you for all the super chats tonight you guys and gals have been amazing with the super chats yes you and, have. Um, thank you and yeah, somebody said Trump is wishy-washy. Yeah, maybe that's the case. Yeah, maybe it's that's not what it us is. that are wishy-washy. It's him that's wishy-washy. Yeah. You know, everyone er, everyone that's in politics is wishy-washy, and businessmen are wishy-washy. You know, he was he was never a politician. He was always a businessman. So Yeah, I know. I yeah. know. I just, I wish for the people out there, our BTV tribe, that gas was more affordable, that yeah, rent was more too. affordable, the food was more affordable. You know, but the plus side is we don't have riots, we don't contrived riots, we don't have all this stuff going on. That's true. And we are having a huge impact mm -hmm. on changing the new norm and reprogramming the new norm. And the consciousness of humanity is being changed way more than if Orange Man were in office. Yes. So for those of you watching on Patreon, the total duration of the show is just about four hours. I don't know what we're going to cut out, but we talked about the Matrix 4. We broke that down. We talked about consciousness. We talked about the next activation site. Um, we went into some old um, rituals as well. Um, really had some great uplifting conversations, new realizations, new focus, new energy, high frequency for 2022. And we are back on top of the game and over the target and it's thanks to each and every one of you so kiss the one that you love right now you never know the last time is going to be and we'll see you even further beyond the veil love you